What is up guys? Just a quick note before we start our draft recap. Um, I will be introducing you to our Season 2 Ruan High Dragons, part of the National Exhibition Syndicate. As you can see in front of you, they're formerly known as both the Shauna Showdowns and Titletown Tyrantrums. If you follow this channel or the NES at all, you will know that I rebranded my team again between Season 1 and Season 2. And so what you see in front of you is my current coaches page for season two. Um, and also an interesting thing to note for the draft recap is that for season two, we are splitting our league into divisions. So the Ruan High Dragons are a member of the red division of the NES. And this means that we will have to play three particular teams twice in the season. And so a little bit of the planning from the draft and for the team builders from this point forward will be with that um, six division games in mind. Um, also, I encourage you to follow me on Twitter if you want to see the weird ass things that I do on the day to day. And if you just want to know, you know, what's on my mind and maybe watch me be an idiot from time to time. Um, yeah, I think that's it. So without further ado, we will get into the draft recap. All right, and we are back now to start our Season 2 NES draft recap for the Ruang High Dragons. Um, as you can see, I have pulled up the Pokemon on Showdown to show you, and we're just going to spend, you know, 15, 20-ish minutes talking about why I drafted what I did, uh, maybe what I wasn't able to draft, and... You know, also just what I plan to do going forward with the team that I have in front of me. So, I started this draft, I believe I had the fourth pick in the draft, something like that. And we used a snake order format, so with the fourth pick, you don't get to pick again until pick 28, I believe is how it maths out, 28, 29, I don't know. And so, the first pick really had to matter and maybe I was going to have to sacrifice something between that first pick and that second pick. And that's fine, I was prepared to. So with my first pick at number four, I elected to go with the Pokemon Excadrill. I had Excadrill in our NES test season and it is one of my favorite Pokemon to use competitively. It is so good. Whether you're running Mold Breaker, Sand Rush, or Sand Horse, I believe. Yeah. It doesn't really matter. It's just a really solid Pokemon to have, especially with the Tapus now running around in Season 2, as well as Magirna. I elected the Season 2 franchise of Pokemon, which we will get back to with our round 11 pick. We're going to save the best for last. And. Because of that franchise, I really had to be careful what I did with my free agent points because I only had so many to work with, in this case 360 instead of 400. And so with taking a tier 1, I was really limiting myself to um, potentially not getting as good of free agents with a lack of points and probably having to take a lower tier Mega to make up for that. That said, I really like Excadrill. I think that it is worth any sacrifices that I have to make potentially later on in the team. And realistically, I really don't think I had to make that many. Um, again, I'll talk to that when I get farther down the line. Um, what I do like about Excadrill especially is that it gets Mold Breaker, so I don't have to worry about Levitate users or anything else that has a move canceling ability. Um, it's really helped me in the past, and I'm sure it will continue to help me in the future. It's nice that nothing with Levitate can switch in on it using an Earthquake if you're running Mold Breaker. And also, if I decide that I ever want to run a Sand Team, Sand Rush is probably the best ability on Excadrill. Especially if you're able to set up a Swords Dance and maybe run a Focus Ash Swords Dance set and just absolutely tear through someone's team. So my logic here is Strong, Physical, Attacker, Steel-type, Ground-type, Stab Earthquake, Stab Iron Head. I think it gets Poison Jab. Poison Jab. Poison Jab. 
So I really like just about everything Escadrille does. I was sad that I wasn't able to pick it up in Season 1, and so I was not going to wait till maybe the second, third round and hope it would still be there. It had to be my Tier 1 pick. Um, or my Round 1 pick. It is a Tier 1 as well. Um, but yeah, so in our Round 1, you can see the very first pick overall is Mega Gardevoir, which I don't think I have to face it, and if I do, I only have to face it once. But Mega Gardevoir scares me a lot less than it would without Excadrill. We also saw two of the Tapus go, Garchomp, Jirachi, Mega Medicham, Mega Lopunny, Kieran Black, Clefable, Lucario. Basically everything minus Celesteela and potentially Garchomp that went in the first round, Excadrill is a really solid counter for or at least a really decent counter for. So I think that this is an especially valuable pick looking at what went in the first round. Everyone was picking up their steel types, everyone was picking up their fairies. Um, yeah, I guess I'll just move on because I've already said way too much about Excadrill. With my second pick, because I had to wait a while, um, I had a lot of time to think about what I wanted it to be. And originally, I was going to go with Milotic and Roserade as like potentially the swing pick that I was going to have coming up. But I was looking at the board, and I felt like we were going to start to see the lower tier Megas go. Because people were going to start planning ahead for you know their free agent points. And also, in the back of my mind, I think I knew this, but I definitely forgot at the time. Um, the Queensland Kamalos were definitely planning on running a Sun Team, and I think that Houndoom was probably their priority Mega, and this is on me, I don't know if I would necessarily call it an intentional snipe, but it was definitely like a snipe with knowledge in the back of my head that I should probably take it now and not wait. And so I chose Mega Houndoom. Uh, for my second round pick, a lot of people were like, oh, you know, it seems like you got picked really early, but then you hear, god damn it, from the team that was going to pick it, and I think that it probably definitely got picked at the right time. Um, I'll look at its stats, 140 special attack, 115 speed, um, 90 in both defenses isn't the worst, 75 HP is solid enough, I mean, it can take a hit if it has to, it's not going to live forever, but it doesn't need to. Um, it gets... Dark Pulse, Fire Blast, like there are you know the usual fire tags. I like that in particular it gets Nasty Plot. Um, I've become a bigger and bigger fan of setting up since I joined the NES. I think that if you have a good or solid setup or two on your team that you can late game sweep with, it really, really, really helps your overall um, production and matches, and it really reflects on your record. Um, it gets a lot of really good coverage, it gets Sludge Bomb, Shadow Ball, um, it can also be a support, it gets Taunt, it gets Will-O-Wisp, um, it gets Roar, so if I set up rocks with Excadrill or with Pokemon that we'll discuss later on, um, it can make them pay for wanting to switch in on it, and it also gets Destiny Bond. I really like having the option of Destiny Bond, I think that Destiny Bond is sort of not underrated, but I think that not a lot of people in leagues think about Destiny Bond because you usually think about differential. You don't want to um, basically throw away one of your Pokemon just to take something else down. But I've seen it work for myself in the past. I've almost every season that we've had, including the off seasons, I've had something with Destiny Bond. I think it's just a good backup plan to have if you're worried that something is going to be too much. Having a fast Destiny Bond user is. It can be clutch. Um, so yeah, I also got 40, I believe, bonus points for um, getting Mega Houndoom. So I was back up to my 400 free agent points now. So I wasn't going to be as limited as I would have been if I had to go with my 360. It basically opened up the option to take Excadrill and still take something else that was decent, like a tier 3 um, or a couple tier 4s. So yeah, that was Mega Houndoom um, in round 2. Then I had the swing pick 
in round three. I wasn't right on the edge, but I only had to wait six picks to pick again. And I selected Rose Raid. Um, at the end of season one, Rose Raid was declared the MVP. It had the most kills and um, I I don't know if it was the highest differential, but it was definitely close to the highest differential, but it had the most kills in the league with 18, I think. And so basically what I had to do was decide, do I want to franchise Rose Raider, or do I want to franchise something else that will be harder to get in Season 2 if I don't franchise Rose Raid? And my logic was, I think that I can get Rose Raid again, I might have to pick it a little bit earlier than I would like, but I think that I can get it. Whereas if I would franchise Rose Raid, I might lose out on something that I might want to keep for Season 2 because Rose Raid would be easier to get. Anyways, so at this point on my draft board, I had Rose Raid, Milotic, Volcarona, and Jolteon all still available to me. Um, and I also had Cresselia on my radar, but it wasn't... A priority just because of the Pokemon that I franchised, which again, I will get to. I like keeping it a secret for anyone that, you know, hasn't figured it out yet that knows my Season 1 team. Um, but basically, at this point, I could have picked Rose Red, I could have picked Milotic, I could have picked Jolteon, I could have picked Volcarona. I wanted them all. I would have loved to have a team with a Rose Red, Volcarona, Jolteon, and... Something I already forgot. Jolteon, Rose Raid, Volcarona, and Milotic Core. Um, I loved, would love to build around that all season. Unfortunately, I had a really good feeling that most of those would be gone before I picked again, so I really had to pick the one that I wanted the most, and the one that I wanted the most in this case was Rose Raid, because of course it was the League MVP. It is such a good Pokemon. It is especially bulky as I'll get out, especially with an Assault Vest. It can eat super effective hits like there's nothing. 125 special attack with Technician allows it to use Hidden Power to basically have the 90 base power of any type, except Fairy, but it gets Dazzling Gleam, so whatever. Um, but it's just, it's such a good option to have on the special side. It is a Cleric, it gets Aromatherapy, it gets Toxic Spikes, so it can set up Hazards. Um, I think Rose Raid is just one of my favorite Pokemon to team build with um, because it's part of that fire, water, grass core that you like to have on most teams when you can. Um, I really I don't have a lot to say about Rose Raid that I didn't already say or talk about in Season 1 when I used it, except that it was the League MVP and I'm so glad that I don't regret not franchising it because I was able to get it back. So anyway, as I said, between this pick and the next pick, I had a pretty good feeling just about everything on the top of my draft board was going to be gone. And wouldn't you know it, one, two, three, four, five picks later, Jolteon was picked. One, two picks later, Cresselia was picked. One, two, three, four, pick, five picks later, Volcarona was picked. And then one, two, three, four more picks later, Milotic was picked. So everything that I was like looking at on my draft board besides Rose Raid was taken, and I'm pretty sure Rose Raid would have gone too. So I was right in the sense that everything that I was valuing at that point was about there. I wasn't over or undervaluing anything. Um, if anything, I know that Alex, um, the Hamilton Rycats coach, would definitely have taken Rose Raid in the next round if he saw it was still available. And I'm sure someone else would have considered it too because it's just such a good Pokemon and it was the MVP that I think it probably had more attention on it than it did last year where I think I got it pretty late on in the draft because no one was really thinking about it as a priority. Anyways, I got to my fourth round pick and I had to dig through what I had left on my draft board and decide what do I want at this point. And I knew I was going to have it in the sixth pick swing where I get to pick again. So I had to really think of two things, you know, which one do I want to prioritize because I'm going to pick two and if the one I'm going to pick after is going to be gone in those six picks, I can't risk that. So I ended up taking Gastrodon with the first pick. 
and that's swing in round four. I've wanted to use Gastrodon, but I've never really needed to because I've had my low tick, and my low tick is so good, and it does Gastrodon's job about as well. But Gastrodon has a different niche than my low tick does. It has Storm Drain, so it can absorb water attacks. That raises its attack, so it can switch in on attacks that might be killing Mega Houndoom or Excadrill or anything else that might be taking water attack at the time. It also gets Sand Force, which is, I guess, just a fun fact if you didn't know. But again, if I do decide that I want to run a Sand Team one week with Excadrill, Gastrodon does get Sand Force, so I can potentially work it in there as well. Its coverage is great, it gets Clear Smog, which I feel like is an underrated move for if you're worried about something setting up, you can bring it. It gets Ice Beam, Earth Power, Scald, Sludge Bomb, Sludge Wave, um, you know, just about everything that I would probably want to run on it, plus Recover, which is what was so great about my low ticket, because I could eat a hit and then recover it off. Um, Gastrodon's defenses, not nearly as good as my low ticks, only 82 spit F, but its HP is out of this world at 111. So that kind of makes up for the difference um, potentially in its special defense. And the fact that it gets recover means that it can fill my low ticks role. It just has to deal with the four times grass weakness. And that's, you know, four times weaknesses. Someone said it in the draft last night. They're a pain. But in a league like this, they're actually, you can learn and you can plan and you can play around them. You Basically, you know more or less what Pokemon you're going to see every week, and so you can plan and you can play accordingly. And so I'm not too worried. I am just I am sad because I would have loved to have my low tick on my team again. Um, then the six pick swing. If I didn't get Volcarona, I really wanted to get this Pokemon, and so I picked Scolipede. Scolipede is one of my favorite Pokemon. Speed Boost is such a good ability on it because it can get Baton Pass, because it hits like a truck with the Swords Dance up, because it already has a 100 base attack. Um, during the test season, I think I just, during not our test season, during our Alola introductory practice session, I put Skullipede on my team because I've been using it on the ladder, and Focus Sash protects Swords Dance, EQ is just destructive. There's not a lot that can handle that type of moveset with Poison Jack for coverage, except Celesteela, which I believe I do have to play Celesteela Toxapex as a core during Season 2. But other than that, not a lot likes it, um, especially with Houndoom on my team. Um, I should be able to eliminate any of the levitating steel type threats that would normally render Skullipede kind of useless um, since things like Skarmory, Celesteela are really the only things that can take either a Poison Jab or an Earthquake. Not a lot can take both really well. Um, and so I like Skullipede. I am glad that it was still there because I really wanted Volcarona and I couldn't get Volcarona. Um, the fact that no one had taken Skullipede was great. I think I pissed a couple people off that were potentially hoping to take it soon after that. Um, again, I think I took it at the right time. I still don't know about Mega Houndoom, but because the person I think was going to take it ended up, you know, being so upset, they probably would have ended up taking it soon. Um, so up through round five, I'm pretty happy with how the draft has gone so far. I'm also really kind of annoyed because my draft board is already starting to empty out a lot of the things that I was hoping to take are gone at this point. Or at least they don't really fit with how I've drafted up until this point. The one that at this point I was kind of I really wanted and decided against was Mudsdale because I already had two ground types on my team and I really didn't need a third. But this is probably the point where I would have been considering taking Mudsdale if it weren't for the fact that I just I didn't really have room for it on the team at this point. I didn't need a third ground type, even though it's probably one of the best ground types in the game to put on your team. Uh, yeah. So I really was starting to rethink my plans. What am I going to do now? How am I going to fit things? I still need a fast or you know some electric type because I don't have any electric types right now. I still need a Dragon-type, I still need a Fairy-type if there are any decent ones left in the draft. 
um, and I still need a fighting type. Those were all things that I was considering. And so the next pickup that I made was Drampa. Drampa was my round six pick, and we were talking of Drampa a lot before the draft because its coverage is insane. It gets Blizzard, Draco Meteor, Dragon Pulse, Energy Ball, Extra Sensory, Flamethrower, Fire Blast, Glare, Hurricane, Ice Beam, Play Rough, Rock Slide, Shadow Ball, Shadow Claw, Surf, Thunder, Thunderbolt, Thunder Wave, Toxic, Bulldoze. It has all of the hidden power coverages, as most things do. It can set up screens, I believe. Light screen. It can set up light screen. At least it gets roar, it gets roost, which having reliable recovery on something that gets boosted when it goes below half HP is insane. It gets cloud nine, so if I have to play a sand team or a rain team or a fire team, I can bring Cloud9, it can Sap Sipper, which is great when paired with Gastrodon, having that grass immunity and a grass weakness on the same team is really, really, really good. But Berserk is probably its best ability, getting that plus one special attack um, whenever it goes below half HP, and then having Roost to Roost off the damage. Um, its stats aren't super impressive, and I think that that is why people were still weary about taking it and why it's only a tier 3. Um, 78, 85, 91 for bulk isn't honestly that terrible. You know, having 85 defense and 91 special defense isn't nothing, but having 36 speed is really not good. And no one's going to be pretending that 36 speed is going to win you any races because it's not. But if you can roost off some damage and then launch a stab hyper voice, roost off some damage, lost a launch a dragon pulse, energy ball, extra sensory fire, blast, flamethrower, ice beam. The fact that its coverage is so insane and it can get boosted special attack just by getting hit and then recovering that HP with roost makes Drampa so good. Um, I think that it's an underrated dragon type. I think that a lot of people look at it, think it's a goofy, look at its speed and then write it off. And I don't know how much longer this thing would have stayed on the board had I waited, which is why I elected to take it now. The other Pokemon that I wanted to take, because again I have the six pick swing, was Vickable. Um, because I wasn't able to get Jolteon, and because fast electric types are kind of in short supply, um, I didn't want to run Galvantula again, and I was really the only fast Volt Switcher left. I believe Zapdos was gone by this point as well, and I really don't have room for Zapdos with Excadrill as my free agent. Um, but I like to use Vigavolt. I love Vigavolt so much. I think its design is one of the best of Generation 7. Its bulk is similar to Drampa, 77, 90, 75. It's more defensive than especially defensive but it has 145 base special attack. I believe that, that is the highest on my team. 145 base special attack. Just, just look at that again, 145 base special attack. This thing is not the fastest, but it will hit you like a truck. It has Levitate, which gives it a ground immunity, which having Roserade and Excadrill and Mega Houndoom all on my team that are all weak to ground, having something that can eat up the ground hits is good. Unfortunately, it can't do much back except Energy Ball, which, you know, it works. It also gets Flash Cannon, Bug Buzz, Air Slash, Discharge. Um, if I really wanted to, I could run a physical set, but I don't know why you would ever want to run a physical Vigor Bolt. Um, the sets that I was actually a huge fan of during our Alola test season was running Roost and Toxic on it because it is bulky enough to take a hit and toxic things and then recover the damage off. Um, but lastly, I really wanted a Volt Switcher. I think that you need a Volt Switcher on your team and I don't like using Mew as one um, because it's really not, it's, I think it has better uses. And so, as you can see, if you haven't figured it out yet, Mew is up there. That's the franchise pick. I'll get back to it. 
Um, so having a dedicated volt switcher is also something that I wanted with Jolteon going. Obviously, I didn't have that anymore. But it doesn't have to run that set. It has a lot of options, and I think that it was a good pick for where it is. Again, I don't know if this thing would have made it 32 more picks back to me. 26 picks, 28 picks, whatever it is. I'm not going to do math. So after Vicavolt went, you saw really nothing that I wanted, though Mudsdale did go right before it in case I'd still been thinking about it. Um, so did Aromatis, which I was considering Aromatis for a fairy type. But really, I didn't feel like I got, you know, shafted too bad after Vicavolt. When it came back to me, I had basically decided on my last three picks already. Um, the last three picks that I was considering were Mismagius, Gallate, and Rampardos. And those were the three that I had written out. They were three that I wanted. I still wanted a fighting type. I still wanted a ghost type to eat up rapid spins, to eat up whatever else it has to eat up. Ghost types are just, they're good to have. You know, ghost is a good type. And so when it came to be my turn and nothing had been taken, I just decided what I thought was going to go. And so I took Miss Magius. Uh, Miss Magius obviously goes like 60, 60, 60 for its HP and offense and defense, but special attack, special defense, and speed are all 105. Um, no one's ever going to tell you that Miss Magius is the best ghost type because there are better. Um, Gengar. But having that solid of a special side and speed is good. It's coverage crazy. Energy Ball, Dazzling Green, Dark Pulse, Power Gem, Psychic, Shadow Ball, Shadow Sneak, Thunder, Thunderbolt, Thunder Wave, Will O Wisp. You know, basically everything you expect a ghost type to have, but also a lot more. Um, and it gets nasty plot. Again, I love having things that set up. Setting up is so good, especially with something like this, which can force a switch if they don't have ghost coverage, essentially. If they don't have anything to hit ghost type for super effective, they're going to want to switch out. It also gets um, pair song, and I believe it gets mean look as well. It does. It gets pair song, mean look. So if I have to perish trash something, I can. Um, it is an option if worse comes to worse. Again, I really like that most people don't expect you to sacrifice your own Pokemon to take them out if you have to. I like having the option. I like having Destiny Bond. I like having Parasong if I need it. It also can force a switch if something is set up. Because even if they take me out, Parasong is still going to go off and force them to switch. And with 105 speed, it will outspeed a lot of things if they haven't set up in speed specifically. So yeah, um, not much more to say about Miss Magnus. Um, I'm glad that a Pokemon that I wanted to take was still available when it came to me. Um, yeah. So then again, six picks swing back to me. In the meantime, you saw Weavile, Bisharp, and Venusaur amongst the things that went. Um, I still wanted my fighting type. And I was also considering for fighting Virizion, maybe one of the Hitmon Pokemon that wasn't taken yet, um, potentially... Um, I don't know, I think Machamp is tier 3, can't remember. I'm bad with tiers off the top of my head. Um, I was also considering Sock as a tier 5, but I ended up settling on Gallade as the thing that I wanted. Um, especially, crazy specially defensive for really no reason at all. Um, also 125 base attack is very good. It's pretty close to Excadrill, I believe. I think Excadrill is 135. Um, abilities, fine. If I want to take a knockoff, I can get my justified boost. Um, what I like about Gallade is it gets a lot of good physical coverage. It gets knockoff, gets leaf blade, gets all the elemental punches, gets poison jab, power up punch, psycho cut. Rock slide, it gets priority and shadow sneak. It gets taunt, it gets special attack, so you'd never run a special Gallade with the special attackers that I've drafted. Um, but just the fact that it has so many offensive options makes it such a good Pokemon. Um, I believe I've faced a lot of Scarfed Gallades to make up for it only having 80 speed. 
Um, and I think that that is a really one of the things that stuck out in my mind as an option when I was trying to decide what I wanted to draft um, was that it has the crazy coverage and it can be scarfed and it can be banded and it can be anything it needed to be. And also the fact that it's especially bulky as it is just means that I have another specially defensive option um, to maybe eat up something that's set up with a nasty plot. So I can get a free switch into something else. Um, you know, I like Gallade. I've never used a Gallade. I've never used any Smagius either. So I really don't know how the two are going to work out. But I think that they fit well on the team that I was considering drafting. Um, so anyways, after Gallade went, we saw Mega Ampharos go, which was actually my original um, number one choice for Mega. I elected against it at the time. I decided I really didn't want Mega Ampharos for this team um, because I was considering more, you know, I want Mega Houndoom, I want that really offensive Fire Dark type instead of a Electric Dragon that is slow as all get out. Not that there's anything wrong with that. I know that Crazy Razy and the Swidden Fletchlings wrecked my life with it in Season 1. So, But after Mega Ampharos went uh, really nothing that I wanted was going. Um, the closest, I guess, would maybe be Avalug. Mm. Um, the closest, I guess, was Avalug, maybe Sock. Sock did go after um, Gallade went, and so if I wanted Sock instead, Sock was now gone. And when it finally came back to my pick, I was just... I didn't really want Rampardos. I didn't want another ground weakness, even with now two ground immunities. Um, Rampardos really, you know, you know, it's going to hit like a physical truck, but that's about it. It's going to go down to probably any super effective hit if it doesn't kill. Um, and Rampardos is still available if I decide I want to pick it up and someone doesn't pick it up first. Um, I can always switch out this last pick or. Um, whatever my tier 5 pick was, Miss Magiers, I can always switch them up for it. But with my last pick, I elected to take Lapras. Um, what I like about Lapras from the face of it is the bulk with 130, 80, 95. Um, again, it's kind of like the Drampa situation with the crazy HP. It's like Excadrill has really good HP. I like having things with high HP. Um, as my defensive tanks, it has a water immunity, so another option for Mega Houndoom to keep it around. It gets hydration if I ever decide, hey, let's run a rain team. And it has shell armor just in case I really don't want to be crit. Um, 95 or 85 special attack isn't going to wow anybody, but I'm considering it more as a wall and less as an offensive threat. But if I want it to be an offensive threat, it does get Dragon Dance, which helps with its coverage because it does get Drill Run, Iron Head, Outrage for physical attacks, Waterfalls, and Headbutt. It also gets really good special attacks, Signal Beam, Thunderbolt, um, Ice Beam. I was looking at it and I really liked Freeze Dry as an option. I believe I have to play Gyarados twice, at least once. I think Crazy has it, so I have to play it at least once. And so having Freeze Dry is a really good option because I can hit Gyarados for super effective damage. Um, and it'll be four times. And I don't know if Gyarados can Oko a Lapras. It probably can't. Um, but also I do have to play Garchomp twice. I believe Danny has it. So having a really pretty bulky, decent Ice type um, as a devoted Ice type will only help me. It can't hurt me. And a lot of these like tier 5 and tier 5 free agent picks, they're just filler. And because there's nothing I really wanted besides maybe another physically offensive threat in Rampardos, I think that Lapras was the better option. And finally, um, my franchise pick was Mew, if you at this point had not figured that out. Um, and you hadn't listened to me blab about it early on in this second set of team members. Um, I elected to franchise Mew over Rose Raid because I figured there's no way that Mew falls to me again. You know, it's a miracle it did it in Season 1 and a miracle it did it in the test season. 
Um, but people know how versatile it is, and if it does fall to me, cool, but that's not something I want to risk, especially if I want to try to get extra drill. There's no way you can get both. I, just, I can't see it happening the way that I did in the test season was that most of us had never done a draft lead before, and so we were drafting just random things. And extra drill ended up staying in the draft for a few rounds. Like, it wasn't even the first couple rounds that it went. You know, there's no way that they both would have survived to me again. So, you know, I was willing to risk Rose Raid not falling to me. I was willing to risk letting the league MVP go because I think it's replaceable. I don't think Mew is because it can be physical, because it can be special, because it can be support, because it can put hazards, because it can get rid of hazards. It can be a cleric, it can baton pass. Mew can literally do anything that just about any Pokemon does that doesn't involve an ability. It's just, you know, straight up. Um, even with the Munion Z, um, Genesis, Supernova, whatever, it's a Z move that's being banned, it's still so, so good. So good. Um, I wasn't willing to let me walk. I didn't want to see it in anybody else's hands. You know, if I have to let it go for the season because I can't franchise it, it's probably going to get picked before I can take it again. That's just the way that it's going to go. You know, it might have fallen to me because I had pick four in this draft, but again, Excadrill definitely probably wouldn't have with how Steel types were going in this draft. So, being able to get me again and only having to pay the 40 free agent points for it when I don't even know if I would have taken a tier one Mega again anyway, you know, I think that it was the best pick that I had. I'm just going to take a second and scroll through its moves together before I move on. Just every TM, every move tutor move, except the starter moves. And on top of that, it gets all of its transfer moves now, so Mew now gets try attack coverage, which it didn't have before. It probably gets all of the Oko moves that it didn't get before. Um, with transfer, you know, just insane, absolutely insane. Um, but yeah, so that is the team. We're gonna flip over. You know, we have Mew, Skull, Peter, Rose, Ray, the Gastrodon, Vicavold, the Smagius, Mega Houndoom, and our four free agents were Excadrill, Drampa, Gallade, and Lapras. Um, I want to see our schedule again it is right here um but yeah so that is the team that i drafted that is where we're going to start the season with um if you made it this far i don't even know how long i've been rambling at this point but thank you for watching this all the way through and i will be back soon to talk about our week one match goodbye